Hello. I'm here to talk to you today about gimbal lock. Now, gimbal lock is hard to imagine if you're not good at visualizing 3D in your head. So I'm going to try to show you what happens. Okay, here goes. This is from Chapter 8, Rotation in Three Dimensions, where we talk briefly about gimbal lock. Now here's how to animate 3D rotation. In each frame of animation, compute the amount of rotation in radians around the cardinal axes, the X, the Y, and the Z, during the previous frame, and store it in a vector V delta. So V delta is a set of Euler angles representing change in orientation. So we declare ourselves, let's say we're using direct X, a D3, dx vector 3, v delta, and we initialize it to the x rotation speed, the y rotation speed, and the z rotation speed. Of course, we'll need to multiply by a time factor since the last frame, and a scale value to bring it to something sensible. But anyway, so v delta is a set of small changes in orientation in the current frame. Okay. Now, in this talk, to save space, I'll use this matrix, D3DX matrix rotation, your pitch row, which gives you a result matrix and result, given an angle around the Y, X, and Z axes, which is equivalent to getting the rotation matrices around each of the axes, Z, X, and Y, multiplying them together to give the matrix M result. Notice D3DX also gives us these handy matrix rotation functions that construct rotation matrices. But we all know what they look like inside with the cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine thing. Okay. So to save space, instead of using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'll use yeah, a line and a half. All right. Now, this D3DX matrix rotation, your pitch roll then, creates a transformation matrix and result for a rotation of angle Z about the Z axis, which we call roll, followed by a rotation of angle X about the X axis, which we call pitch, then a rotation of angle Y about the Y axis, which we call yaw. Now, at one end of the pipeline, coming in then as input, we have the change in rotation represented as a set of Euler angles. Now, at the other end of the pipeline, we're going to want an orientation matrix to give to the graphics API, but what we do in the middle is up to us. Since V delta is a set of Euler angles, it does seem natural to store orientation as a set of Euler angles too. So let's use a persistent vector. By persistent, I mean it sticks around from frame to frame. We don't lose the result. Um, v Euler, declared as a static variable or as a class member variable to make it persistent. So here we go, d3dx vector 3 v Euler. We'll accumulate the rotation of the object in v Euler. So every frame of animation will add v delta into v Euler. Okay, after we've done that, we'll convert it to a matrix for the graphics API using D3D X matrix rotation your pitch row of the V Euler angles. Now, let's suppose we've got this cube rotating, um, let's see, at a constant speed around its uh, Z, X, and negative Y axes. Let's say it's going at one degree per frame at 30 frames per second. So after three seconds, that's 90 frames, it's 90 degrees. It should be in this orientation. 90, not minus 90, 90. Now according to Euler, a rotation around these three axes should result in a rotation about a single axis because he figured out that actual rotation is closed on the composition. So let's see if we can find out what the cube should look like after this rotation. I'm going to animate the uh, 
frames in between, but what we're really interested in though is the last frame. Here we go, rotation around a single axis. And we end up, after 90 degrees, with this kind of skew width cube. It's uh, got the bottom face over here, the top face over there, left up there, right down there, uh, front up at the top and back down there. But anyway, definitely skew width at some crazy angle in space. That's the frame we want to animate for the current frame, the rotation for the current orientation. Unfortunately, Euler Angles tells us that uh, we shouldn't be animating a different frame, so the Euler Angles is wrong. Um, what we end up with is a minus 90 degree rotation around the x-axis instead of this skew with thing. Here we go. Rotate around Z. Then rotate around X. 90 degrees, and then rotate around minus 1, 90 degrees. It's all 90 degree rotation, so uh, regardless, you can see pretty easily that we end up with a cube that's not skew with. so this is definitely wrong. In fact, this is a, a minus 90 degree around the x-axis, or 90 degrees around the minus x, there, because we've put it back to its original orientation. Very quick, let's do this piece by piece. Here are the object space axes. First we rotate around the object Z, which goes straight into the screen. Okie dokie. Here we go, 90 degrees around Z. Then we want to go 90 degrees around X, which is now vertical. You can't see it, it's on, on the side. But here we go, 90 degrees around X. And then we go 90 degrees around negative Y, which is where the z-axis used to be, you were pointing straight out towards you. So let's do that. We end up with the wrong thing. It's easily fixed by a minus x rotation. Hmm. So what's going wrong? Um, it's called this gimbal lock. The x rotation of 90 is making the y rotation of minus 90 and the Z rotation of plus 90 cancel each other out. So it's that rogue X being, well, plus or minus 90 would make it happen. Minus 90 in this case that messes things up. In fact, things go slightly wrong whenever X is bigger than zero, the, the, or the magnitude of X is bigger than zero. So long as um, that rotation, or that orientation change gets bigger and bigger, gimbal lock gets worse and worse. So if we were to animate the whole sequence, we would get a weird kind of tumbling in space. So let's see what happens if we a animate continuous rotation of, uh, let's say, plus one, minus one, plus one around those axes. Here we go. We get this weird kind of tumbling through space. Every now and again things look kind of okay, but it's a mess. Not what we want. We want the clean Euler thing. So, to get it right, store orientation as a persistent matrix M orient. Use it to accumulate rotation. So, we immediately turn V delta, the change in orientation in the current frame, into a matrix and multiply it into M orient. Save M orient and use it for M world. Because V delta dot X is very small in general, this won't get much gimbal lock. In fact, there will be a little teeny bit of gimbal lock, but not enough to make it look wrong. Off by, say, less than one pixel, which is nothing. So in summary, don't store orientation as Euler angles because of the potential for gimbal lock when the second angle, the X, is large. It's okay to use Euler angles, though, for small angles, such as the change in orientation during a single frame of animation. Well, that's all I have for you now. Bye-bye.